we're back. Um, it's been about, oh, I guess we're on day four now of our fleece drying. It actually was pretty much dry yesterday, but um, yeah, other things got in the way. Haven't got around to doing it yet. So that's the beauty of it. It can keep sitting there and nothing really goes wrong. But you can see it piled here. It has dried beautifully. We've got very light, fluffy, um, pretty much ready to go. Still quite a bit of um, debris in there, as you can see, bits of hay, things like that. They tend to come out in the carter. I also pick them out uh, as we go. I will show that. We'll get this off the rack and head over to the carters. And uh, we're gonna kind of go through uh, the two different carters that we have and some of the things we like about one over the other, etc. And uh, yeah, see if we can get this all spun today. All right, so we are um, all finished with the drying process as I just showed and I've got the carters out. So we're gonna go through a little bit about carding. Um, basically, carding is a process of um, untangling the fibers and sort of cleaning them, sort of, <laughs> and uh, getting them all lined up in a parallel fashion uh, in order to um, spin them. Now, I'm gonna flip you around here, show you the carters. Now, with the Icelandic fleece, I do use drum carters, as you can see here. Um, most people associate carding with, let me get these out, the paddle carters. Uh, you know, the process of putting the fleece in and going back and forth like this in order to um, align the fibers. Now, with Icelandic fleece, because of the length of it, um, it is very hard to use these. You can, um, but it's kind of recommended to trim the um, tog hairs shorter. Uh, but we'll come to that after. Let's go over the carters here first because we do have two and they are quite different and we'll maybe just kind of touch on that very very quickly. Um, we have here, this is a, both these are homemade jobs um, that we've been fortunate enough to acquire over our time with sheep. This is a belt driven, it's just a leather belt uh, basic concept is the fibers are moving in opposite directions in order to um, get them lined up. These ones here, uh, you've got quite a distance between your uh, teeth. And the other thing on this one is you've got the same teeth on the um, inner wheel as you do on the big drum. Now. As you can see, they go in opposite directions when I spin. Let's see if I can get it to go with one hand. And basically, you're going to feed in here, and it comes through there and catches this one, and this one pulls it straight. Um, that is one of our carters. Then we have this one, which I've been using, so it is full of dark fleece, so hopefully it shows all right. Uh, this one here is a lot more fine-toothed, uh, you can see here it also has um, the small inner wheel is even finer than the big drum. Um, I like this one for um, getting a really, really nice smooth um, finish with it. That one is great for an initial run through, gets debris out and saves the, uh, the, the better of the two. Um, for the more detailed work, it saves me breaking pins. I think they're pins, teeth. Uh, you can see this one here. If I go in here, right on the seam, that's where the teeth usually break from. Uh, you get a catch there, and if you've got a tangle, it ends up caught in the teeth. Uh, but same concept, this one spins, and that inner one goes at the same time. Basically, these are a wooden drum that has a cloth over top of teeth, and it's just stapled down the seam line here to keep it on. The one thing that I do love about this one, and I would recommend for anybody who is 
thinking about purchasing a drum carter, chain driven. Very, very nice feature. Uh, you don't ever have to worry about uh, it stretching like the belt. The belt, you can see with this chain one, there isn't even a, um, a spot for tightening it. It is what it is. Where, if I come to the belt one here quickly, we have a little lever here that we use to stretch the belt and tighten it. Unfortunately, we are at our max, so we do need to either get a new belt or take this one apart and re-sew it closer. Uh, but it still spins, it still works for uh, what we need it for. That's kind of going over the options when it comes to carding. Now you can also use uh, professional carders. We haven't looked into getting the fleece uh, professionally done because a lot of places will not process fleece that is over six inches long and the Icelandic does tend to get over six inches long unless you were really on the ball with your uh, shearing which we have yet to do. Uh, we've tried. Um, last year I did get a couple sheared in the fall and their spring fleece is going to be nice and short and hopefully maybe by next year uh, we can maybe get on the ball with that, but uh, we haven't really looked into it too much as to what the expense would be and so on. So let's get into looking at the fleece now that it's clean and dry, and we will talk a little bit about that. <coughs> when it comes to Icelandic fleece, again, as I was saying, um, you do have that tendency to get very, very long fleece. I've got Enya's fleece here, and I'm just going to hold it end to end here for you. And you can see you are well over, you're probably even over eight inches long. Um, so uh, this is where you get into a dilemma when it comes to uh, professional um, processing is when you've got this long fleece, they, there's very few that do it and those that do, it is quite costly. Um, so it is something that's definitely to think about. What I want to kind of touch on here is why Icelandic fleece is so desirable. Uh, I'm not going to go into too much detail because I do want to do another video on this when it comes to the spinning part, but here's a nice clean piece of Enya's fleece and I'm going to just kind of take a, a lock off here. Basically it grows in locks like that, usually a little curly, and what you've got is you've got an undercoat called the thel, which is really 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 soft it's like a beautiful uh, spun well it could be kind of like cashmere it is the stuff that you would wear close to the skin and then you have the longer tog which is the outer kind of guard hairs it's the waterproof real strength of the fleece now I usually spin this all together because I find it is still beautiful and soft for what I do I make mittens slippers um, you know, sometimes scarves, um, I find all spun together, it's called a lopi yarn, and that is ideal for my uh, needs, I guess you could say. But the other thing you can do is you can separate this, and I'm just going to do a quick demonstration here. You hold those tog hairs at the end, fell hairs at the top, and you just kind of give a gentle tug, and there's those coarser Tog hairs out, and then you're left with this beautiful, and yes, there's still a few hairs in there that if you really want to get picky, you could take out, but you've got a beautiful, about three inch, maybe four if you stretched it out, fell hair, and this is very, very desirable. This is where Icelandic fleece is um, quite sought after for, for spinning because it's so versatile. You can, you can take this and make twine, rugs, basically anything like that, horse blankets. Um, this is really, really great for weaving. If um, you, for your warp on your loom, it is strong. I mean, when you're talking that sort of length of a fiber, once it's spun, you, you really can't pull that apart. Uh, it has to be cut. On the flip side, you have this beautiful soft fur uh, fleece that, uh, you know, for undergarments, for anything. I mean, this is beautiful close to the skin. I like to do a warp on the loom with this stuff and then I do my weft with um, the uh, fell and that just kind of makes a nice scarf that's easy to uh, easy to wear. But anyways, I'm not going to go into too much detail on that. Uh, what we're doing here is we're going to card this. And now, 
the uh, basic process, feed that in. I, if I can at all make it happen this way, I prefer to feed it in from the, uh, the tog part or the fell part. Um, I find sometimes the tog hairs don't grab. Um, this would be where you could not do this without the drum carter because your tog, your tog hairs would stick off the end of your paddles and you'd end up just getting them. But in it goes. I apologize if this is loud. I go like that you can see it's starting to catch there and you have to run this through you take it off the car you, you run it through take it off run it through again I often find I run it through three times just to get it nice so you will have parts as you can see right here it's gone crooked uh, that's not a big deal it will in the next one level out another issue with the Icelandic fleece is here Sometimes those tog fells are just a little slippery and they don't catch on this drum. Tog, tog hairs, not tog fells. Sometimes the tog hairs don't catch. So we just kind of feed that in. Uh, how much you feed onto this really is personal preference. I don't go super big because I find it easier to pull it into the... Um, Pull it into a roving. That's what it is. Holy cow. Um, when uh, it's a bit narrower than the full eight inches across. Um, the one thing I have been noticing is I've been, because I have done some of this fleece already to kind of get ahead, is some of the seed, some of it is just too full of seeds for me to use. Uh, unfortunately, uh, the pastures that we had these sheep in last year in the fall were so full of uh, goldenrod and wild parsnip and all this stuff that went to seed and that got all into their fleece so so what i do is this bit here where the seam is that's where i can start to kind of feel how much i have on there i try and pick out any pieces that i see as they come to the surface but I'm going to add a bit more on that because I don't think there's enough on there yet. And basically anything that doesn't stick to it, anything that comes off on my small carter, I put off to the side to put into dryer balls or something later because if it didn't catch on the carter, it's probably going to be problematic. So now get that seam to the top again. Here we are and I'm pushing and I feel it's probably a quarter of an inch thick in the poofiness. I mean, obviously you can squish it down more than that, but now this is not the proper tool for this. This is just a knitting needle. There is a tool, a pick that you can get for the carter. I do need to get one. I also need to get the uh, little brush tool for cleaning the fleece out of it, but I don't have those yet. So you go down the seam and split it out and I try and grab it all into one hand as much as I can. Remember this is our first time through the carter so I'm kind of picking out everything that's there. You will have stuff that doesn't come out as you can see. Um, that's fine. Oh boy that's really gray in there. So this is after one card and you can see it has really lined those uh, fibers up quite well but we still have parts that are quite mucky, chunky, that sort of thing. That is why we run these through again and probably even again. So that was card number one. The rest of them go quite quickly. Uh, the one thing I do try and keep is everything sort of in a tight line here. Um, it just makes it neater and allows you, as you start to see a bunch, I'll, I'll kind of try and demonstrate here. So. This is starting to get quite thick here. I just grab and give a little tug, as if almost the same idea as when you're thinning it down for the spinning wheel. And I can see there's some hay. I do try and pick out anything if I can, because once it gets into the bat uh, or roving, uh, it is very difficult to pick out. So here again, I've got some of those tog hairs that are not grabbing. So we're just gonna put them up there. 
it's more the little fine hairs that if they don't uh, catch, I take them out because they're going to cause problems later for the spinning process. And so far, I have a pile about like that that is discarded. It's not discarded, I'm going to use it for uh, dryer balls. But it would not be ideal for spinning purposes. So, that was number two. I'll take it off and show you quickly. There we are. So that is card number two. And you can see we've got a lot less of those bobbly bits in it. The one thing we still have is quite a bit of seed particles in places. But for what I'm going to use this for, it's fine. This was my own fault. I left the fleece in a bag out in the barn, which the chickens had a heyday with, literally filling it with hay on the floor. And then, oh, this is going very beautifully. It has, it aligns them so quickly. I found, uh, when I was hand carding and trimming it, it took a lot longer to get them. Having a drum carter is very nice. And there we are. That is our finished bat to be made into roving. Thank uh you. -huh.